What was that like to make? I mean, it's come from a stage play onto the screen, and you wouldn't know that that, that was the case. So just kick it off. It was also the first uh, geriatric lesbian road trip stage play. I was going to add that, actually. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, there's lots of different things. Uh, you know, I think the main difference between a play and a movie is the uh, the sense of the world. I mean, in a play, all of that great Canadian landscape and, and vista was simply implied in the look of their w Ryan's wide-eyed looks. And here you can actually see them and, and they become very much a part of telling the story. Yeah. Um, where did the inspiration come from for the story though? I mean, do you know someone like Stella? Because I really want you to say yes, you I know do. so many women like Stella over Fantastic. I will our turn into Stella pond. myself one day, I'm sure. You're halfway there. <laughs> I'm halfway there. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, well, the inspiration for me is simply, you know, I'm a middle-aged guy now, so I'm old enough to have thought that the idea of marrying uh, a boyfriend was completely impossible. I have been with Doug for 13 years. He produced the film. And frankly, I think making the movie was a way for us to not have to talk about getting married for another two <laughs> years. <laughs> and um, Brenda, I would like to ask, what attracted you to the role of Dottie? I mean, d is it often that you get a script that's kind of like, right, lesbian, you know, going on the run on a road movie? I I'm guessing that doesn't come through every your day. every day, really. Every day, yeah. <laughs> No, about it. No, what attracted me always is, is is I think the script is just a lovely, well written story, and it's a love story, and that's what attracted me. And it's funny. It is funny. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's probably too hard to say favorite scenes, but I do want to ask about. There's a particular scene that I've been told by friends of mine is known as tea bagging, which I wouldn't have any <laughs> idea what th that is. But it is when you when you have a man's genitals quite close to your face for a quite a few. If you would like to talk us through that. Well, I mean, I've done it in private, but I've never done it in exactly. public. <laughs> and it took two days to film. Two days to film that. <laughs> Left a bit, done a bit, up a bit. <laughs> can't see it. It was like tough. It was tough. It was going. tough. It was a tough scene. And it was tough on the guy, really. Yeah. It? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Banging him with a stick and everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, did you do your own stunts in the film as well? Because I know that you fall out of bed at the very like, front of the film. That was the, the only film. stunt I did. And I'm <laughs> always falling out of bed. Look at me. I'm, <laughs> I'm a wreck. I'm a broken woman. <laughs> <laughs> and how was it with um, Olympia? You, you look like you've got such great chemistry on screen. I mean, it just seemed like it was a fun film to make. Am I right? It was, yeah. We, had a lot. we laughed an awful lot on it. And I've known Olympia for a long time. Yeah. She's a great friend. So there was no chemistry to have to make with a, sure. like as if you would with a stranger. Yeah. So uh, we just rewrote the script every night and then told Tom what we were going to say. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> and um, just to kind of like bring Ryan in on the end there, I'm not ig ignoring you. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's is this like this okay. how it works? Okay. Well done, there, you got it. Um, I mean, what was it like for you? Is this, um, are you an actual dancer? That's, I want to get that in. You are an actual dancer, aren't you? You're, that's uh, <laughs> very, very bad. bad. That's how I got the, the part. Because you... <laughs> uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a dancer. Uh, I'm actually a mime. Okay. Wow. Uh, you're a mime. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. Uh, yeah, no, and I figured quickly that there's no money in that. Right. So uh, I became a uh, theatre and film actor, and... Uh, and yeah, we choreographed, <laughs> we had a choreographer, which is sad. <laughs> uh, but we had one and he choreographed the, uh, the dance and that's, I rehearsed it many times. Many times. And Did you find that easy to do? <laughs> no. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you don't have much of a costume in the film, so I'm presuming, you know, me, you, me, did, sorry, you sorry? don't have much of a costume. You do no. spend a lot of your, you know, the screen time with your shirt off. So did you get into shape especially for this or? I don't know why I'm so excited about a man getting his shirt off. But <laughs> we can talk about it later if you want. That's <laughs> well. Uh, no, uh, I uh, no. Yeah, I hate I hate running. It's uh, <laughs> really hate it. <laughs> it's very bad. Everybody should avoid the gyms at all costs. There's always pulleys and things to hurt yourself with. So um, no, I don't get into shape. Well, then he's actually he looks fit, but he's completely unfit. We could shoot the running scene once, and he was done. <laughs> <laughs> And may I add, actually, uh, this is Ryan's film debut. Well done, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
Was there, um, was there anything in particular that you actually like to film? You know, that kind of like when you've done it, you you know, you're transposing it from the stage to the to the screen. So what was it? You know, was there something particular? Uh, directing a movie is an extended process of being disappointed and letting go of your visions. <laughs> and you're a big part of that. Yes. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's very rare that there's ever a moment on screen that actually looks like it did in my head, in my fantasies, in my dreams. And in this film, there actually is one. And it is the moment between these two where... Prentice is dancing on the side of the road, and we see him through Dottie's eyes, and Brenda uh, performs so beautifully and takes it all in, and it is exactly, uh, it almost never happens, but it's exactly what it was in my head. So that was my best directing day, I think. Well, I recognize that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people um, like Molly who live on the peripheral of a loved one's life. And mostly, um, I was aware that there's certainly, obviously, issues of elder abuse in the world. It wasn't at the forefront of my mind, but I wanted to make sure that Molly was, was operating at a of place of love and, and that really her motivations were not against Stella and Dottie, but very much she was trying to, to do right by her grandmother, by misinterpreting a situation. And I love Stella very much, but she, she does not make one good decision in the entire film. <laughs> and I think uh, it's easy to understand why somebody could mistake uh, Stella for being somebody who's not necessarily kind and caring and loving of Dottie. So that's that's what I was thinking. It wasn't really any different to doing any other scene. I mean, it, it wasn't a sexual kiss. It was a kiss of pure love at that moment and very affectionate. And uh, it was quite nice, actually. I always assume she said they got together every night and rehearsed. <laughs> I figured there was a bit of whiskey and a bit of snogging involved in that. That's one of the scenes we never even talked about, oddly enough. Never. Hmm. No, we just it never, it was never any bother. Is that what you mean? They've both been around. <laughs> A little bit, yes. I mean, it doesn't have some of the typical, this is a Canadian film, but without uh, the government support that uh, usually they get. And uh, there was a great concern that there wasn't really, they said there's no audience for this movie. And I said, no, they're in England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I knew, of course, that there was. There's, the film is mostly financed by a company called uh, the Sydney Kimmel Entertainment in Los Angeles. Uh, and Mr. Kimmel is in his 80s himself and produced films like uh, Lars and the Real Girl, United 93, and I think had a, an idea, not only was there an audience, but also it was a, a unique movie that, that would stand out and, and be special.